In maybe the greatest game one in NBA Finals history, Steph set a record for threes in a quarter during the opening frame, but somehow the feisty, resilient Celtics still led by two at the half. A dynasty-esque patented third quarter explosion from the dubs, with Otto Porter, Andrew Wiggins, Jordan Poole, and even Andre Iguodala getting involved, gave the Warriors a 12-point cushion entering the final period. Despite holding Jason Tatum to 3-for-17 shooting from the field, a flurry from Jalen Brown, Marcus Smart, Al Horford, Peyton Pritchard, and the man who led the charge in Derek White, led a once-in-a-lifetime, undeniably dominant scoring charge to bum-rush and absolutely stun the Golden State Warriors along with their massive and passionate fan base. In today's finals recap, you'll see a full breakdown of Game 1, including an in-depth look at Boston's trade deadline acquisition in 2022. Before continuing, only 10.8% of you watching right now are subscribed, so if you haven't already, please subscribe and hit the bell so you don't miss a single upload. Also, please drop a thumbs up. It takes a few seconds and makes a massive difference in YouTube's algorithm. You can follow me on Instagram and Twitter at DeepFlowHoops, and I'll follow you back. Link is down below in the description for those two platforms. The Boston Celtics are the first team in NBA history to win a finals game by double digits after trailing by double digits entering the fourth quarter. This team is built to defy the odds and overcome every bit of adversity placed in front of them, as we've broken down in my Celtic uploads all year long. That was the main reason I made this video before the Celtics even kicked off the playoffs, talking about why they were built for the finals. And it's also why after the second round against Milwaukee, I made this video predicting a Celtic championship. Despite Curry not just setting the record for threes in a single frame, but also scoring the most points in a finals quarter since Michael Jordan in 1993, somehow Boston still owned a two-point lead at the half. From Golden State's perspective, one of the main reasons for that, in my opinion, was a coaching mistake from Steve Kerr, who rested Curry way too much in this game, and it was specifically when he took him off to start the second quarter, that was when Steph was taken out of his shooting momentum. I'm aware Steph's dealing with an ankle injury, but everything's about your flow, especially when a bad ankle can swell up. If Kerr left Steph on during the second quarter after his all-time great first and played him until he visibly looked somewhat worn out, Golden State could have built off their 10-point lead and potentially made the Celtics quit. Instead, Curry came off and Boston quickly evaporated that lead. Stephen Curry needs some more help from Clay and Poole, among others. Taking Steph off the court when he was playing so well, though, displayed a clear underestimation of the Celtics from the Warriors coaching staff. We'll get to Boston's historically great comeback, but Golden State's players also got complacent after that third quarter run as they were unable to respond from the flurry of Celtic three-pointers. After simple penetration from either Tatum, Brown, or Smart, whether it was Double P, Peyton Pritchard, Big Al Horford, or the man who GM Brad Stevens traded Josh Richardson to the Alamo City for at 2022's trade deadline in the man of the hour, Derek White. In the end, the Warriors didn't know what had hit them. Before going into the film room on the momentum shifting daggers from the other baby-faced assassin in White, I can't stress enough how the strong-willed mentality of the battle-tested Celtics paid off throughout this entire game. Whether it's getting down 2-1 or 3-2 in a series and clawing back, or building up a habit of starting slow and turning the ball over, Ime Udoka's team has faced heavy adversity and bounced back all playoffs long. Game 1 on the biggest stage in the NBA Finals was no different. Up until Thursday, Al Horford had played the most playoff games in NBA history without reaching the Finals, and the Godfather certainly was savoring the moment out there during his first time competing into the month of June. Dropping daggers on Warrior fans at the Chase Center all game long, Stone Cold Big Al came up big for Celtic Nation, dropping 26 points on 9 for 12 shooting from the floor, and making 6 of his 8 three-pointers. After Derek led the charge with a couple three-pointers, Al laid the cement in the concrete with a few distance daggers of his own. That was a big time performance, which made up for the uncharacteristic shooting struggles from Jason Tatum. My boy Jason will bounce back, he's a superstar for a reason, but whether he's hitting shots or not, you have to give credit to this man's improved playmaking and underrated leadership as well. When things aren't going well, that's when the real leaders are exposed, and I give credit to Tatum for staying under control. And I also give credit to everyone on this Celtics roster, whether on the bench or the floor, for staying calm, cool, and collected. 
even after Stephen Curry scored 11 points in the first six minutes of Game 1. Daniel Tice shockingly drained a three-pointer in the opening minutes to calm the storm. He always used to kill my Raptors. He did this past season even. If Tice can somewhat match the versatility of other Celtic bigs, he may be able to fill in a few minutes for them during this series. But other than Big Al, the rim-protecting presence of the best big man defender in the league in Robert Williams III was most crucial. RW3 racked up four blocks on the night and remains one of basketball's most underrated players. Down by 10 plus points entering the final frame, first the unrightfully criticized ball handler in the 6'6", 225 pound Jalen Brown, who's typically the most talented second option in the NBA, stepped up as the night's number one guy, as JB drained two isolation daggers to start the fourth. Next time down the court, Jalen lobs it up to Lob Williams for the jam, cutting a 12 point deficit to five in a snap, and then Jalen finds Pritchard streaking down the court for another created bucket, proceeding to hit a catch and shoot three from the corner off a slick dime from Derek White. Without that bit of scoring and playmaking from Jalen, there would have been no comeback, so big ups to Brown. But even after this drive and dish to the corner from Tatum to Pritchard, Golden State came back with a bucket on the other end to take a four point lead with just 6.30 remaining, and that's when Derek's production factored in. On back to back possessions, White drains two three point bombs right here under pressure, one of which was directly in Curry's face. That opened up the door for Horford to go off, but Derek's extra ball handling to push the pace next to Tatum, Brown, and Smart continues to mean everything for these Celtics. Derek was a game high plus 25. He scored throughout the entire game on a Tatum off night to keep the Celtics afloat, finishing with 21 points on 6 for 11 shooting while making 5 triples. What shocked you the most in game 1? Best answer down below in the comments gets next video shout out. Top 5 commenters by June 21st receive free NBA merchandise this summer, so leave your take on today's question to compete in Community Speaks. Today's Speaks winner is TJ Views. Pause to read his answer and the honorable mentions. Appreciate every answer. I hope you have a great one. DFlow signing off.